So stop me if you've been in this situation before. You're playing an old RPG and you're stuck on a boss. Now you can do one of two things. You can either learn the boss's attacks and weaknesses, look what you have in your skill set that's effective against the boss, and work out a strategy that can resolve his eventual defeat. Or... You can grind. Hello everyone, I'm the Rogue Lord. From the Nose Keeper Apprentice. And today I'd like to go over the topic of grinding. Grinding, for those who don't know, is where you repeat a task within a video game to unlock something or build the XP to continue progressing. Whether it be item farming in a simulation game or loot grinding in a multiplayer shooter like Destiny or something. However, I think the term is often synonymous with the role-playing game genre, or RPG for short. I wanted to go over why I think that despite modern games of said genre finding ways to circumvent the method, players still see it as an easy solution to a problem they might be stuck on in a game. Now, without wasting any more time, I personally think we should start with early examples that would do... Well... Just that. Hope you like wild slimes, cause you're gonna be killing a lot of them. Released in 1986, Dragon Quest 1, while not the first, was one of the earliest instances of RPGs on the console, and in my opinion, is still to this day, the pinnacle example of grinding. This flowchart here? This is the game in a nutshell. You had to grind a certain level in order to have the stats to survive against stronger enemies so that you could progress. Now, while I personally couldn't bring myself to finish it, this menu system is incredibly antiquated. This game, from my experience, definitely lived up to its infamy. I spent a good two hours just to get a good taste of what to experience, and yeah, it was mostly grinding. The interesting thing about this game, though, is according to my research on Dragon Quest 1, if you cut the grinding out of the game, the game goes from taking this long to beat to this. I'm a firm believer that grinding existed to create artificial length for RPGs. Due to the limited hardware at the time, you couldn't just increase the length of the game by adding more areas. Rather, you take the method that doesn't require making new assets, and say that's part of the experience. Dragon Quest 1 wouldn't be the only one to do this, though. Other examples from the NES era would include Final Fantasy 3, where the final dungeon has a grind wall, Mother 1, which followed the same format as Dragon Quest 1, and Fantasy Star, which also followed the same format as Dragon Quest 1. You need those numbers to survive those attacks in these games. Though, I would argue Final Fantasy III is the most egregious example here. The game's a fairly smooth experience with some minor humps here and there, only for a final dungeon to drag your journey to a five hour long venture of grinding. Though what's weird is that the first Final Fantasy wasn't a victim of this design. For as buggy as it is, it's a pretty straightforward adventure with very little if any grinding required. And I think it's worth acknowledging it for such while still maintaining a fair game length. Now, while artificial length was the key factor to most of these games mentioned, this would only be the case regarding the NES era of games. After developers moved on to the Super Nintendo, oh, you're playing with power? Super power. grinding in video games became less of a necessity and more an option. Games like Final Fantasy IV, Dragon Quest V, and Earthbound were far less about grinding and more just going from point A to point B. Earthbound introduced a neat mechanic where if you were high enough leveled, you would just kill the enemy on the map no combat required while still wreaking the benefits. And in Final Fantasy VI's case, if you were to grind, you'd practically break the game in half. Grinding was no longer a means to make the game longer. I like to believe this is where gamers started looking for more optimal methods of grinding as well. See, you could just start grinding for six hours and take forever to get a magic points in Final Fantasy VI in the World of Ruin section. Or, you could equip an EXP egg to someone and just kill this cactuar here, and suddenly you've learned five different magic spells. Dragon Quest V had a trick where farming metal slimes got you a ridiculous amount of EXP. Heck, even Pokemon being a bit late to the party in... 2010... ...had Arduino. I wouldn't be surprised if this Pokemon was endangered. Basically, devs would designate a lot of EXP for one monster type and maybe throw an item like an EXP share to mitigate the grinding. Though in most cases, by the time you have access to this monster, you're either in the second half of the game or at the final boss's doorstep. I mean, at this point, might as well make sure you're at the level cap before you go fight them. That's not to say that all RPGs included access to enemies or items that made for good grinding strategies. In fact, as time went on, there were games that just flat out discouraged grinding. 
Games out of the Shin Megami Tensei series, for example, never required grinding despite its unrelenting difficulty. On paper, mind you. But, certain strategies for bosses require the right level to fuse demons with the right skills. So long as you're not running away from enemies, you'll have the experience you need to summon the right demons for said bosses. Both Paper Mario 64 and the Thousand Year Door never required grinding and strictly focused on the battle mechanics of the game. In fact, their predecessor, Super Mario RPG, had a level cap of only 30. All of these aforementioned Mario RPGs were likely designed with a no grind in mind, as these are considered entry level RPGs. And while I can't speak for experience with this franchise, I hear a lot of the Xeno games steer away from having grinding, or a lot of action RPGs like the Kingdom Hearts series or the 7 remake or any of the Souls games are designed more around learning the boss's patterns and when to strike and less about what your level is. To a point where in Kingdom Hearts' case, there are no AXP challenge runs out there. The thing is though, despite systems having enough storage to make an RPG the right length, I mean, you can tell the difference here, right? We're here to kill chaos. I still see people posting grinding methods online. Stuff like the Metal Slime trick in Dragon Quest XI, or the infamous Reaper trick in Persona 5 Royal. I'll admit, there's some fun in finding a strategy to level up, executing said strategy, and just watching your level skyrocket. Don't get me wrong, I don't miss the idea of the game consisting mostly of grinding, but if I can get away from a level trick to level cap my party, I'm gonna do it. I usually only really grind post-game to deal with some game's optional bosses, whether it be something out of the Disguise series like Tyrant Overlord Ball or Sephiroth in Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. Mind you, when it comes to super bosses, I really think the level capping is more of a safety net than anything when confronting the game's greatest challenge. I might have to do a video about that sort of topic. So, what am I getting at here? What's the reason for this, despite the fact the games nowadays kind of evolved outside of killing enemies to boost numbers for the sake of progression, repeat, ab nauseum. <sighs> well, I think it's cause at the end of the day, and the entire point of this video, the reason for that is grinding just kind of evolved as well as becoming part of the experience. The, the actual experience, not what the NES tried to pass off as an RPG experience experience. Whether it be an exploit in the system like Final Fantasy 2 or the Metal Slime trick in Dragon Quest XI, grinding is something that is probably never going to leave RPGs, and at the end of the day, the longest people keep finding tricks to speed up the process, I'm personally alright with it. Alright, first video done. Here's hoping you guys enjoyed, I plan to do more topics on RPGs as well as something else I have in mind called the journey through fill in the blank in which I share my experience of an RPG I've never played before. Here's a teaser for what the first video of that category is and what's to come next. Till next time, I'm the Rogue Lord, and here's to the next chapter in my journey. So tell me, you happy with your lot in life? Uh, but before I do that, there's a new game I gotta